Hey everyone, my name is Christian Swenson. I'm a BYU grad student in comparative studies, and I have high functioning autism. Yeah, so I thought I'd take this post to just describe to you what it's like inside my head. It's, I think, different than it's like in neurotypicals' heads. Obviously, I don't know. I've not been inside your head if you're a neurotypical. I haven't been inside your head if you have autism either. But I think I can draw some conclusions based just on the difference in our assumptions, our language, the way we talk about things, what we say about what goes on inside our head, etc., etc. And I think what's really distinctive about what it's like inside my head as someone with autism is that I see processes. I don't see things. To put it in another way, imagine uh, like a, a pattern or just a design, like an artwork. I wouldn't bracket any of that artwork and say, oh, there's a person, there's the background, there's uh, another person, there's the umbrella, there's the lake, etc. in the painting. I would just see the negative space behind and amid all of it. I would see the whole thing as a series of relationships. Not necessarily of relationships between parts, but relationship in itself. Let me put it another way. As someone with autism, I tend to see the world as a gestalt. A gestalt is a word for a whole um, in respect to its ability to be more than the sum of its parts. That is, I see the world as a whole. I see it as what is left over when you have cataloged all the parts and you can't say there's something still missing here. I see what's missing. I think people with autism tend to see what's missing there. We don't bracket. That is one thing we cannot do. We don't bracket. We don't say, oh, I'll deal with this later. We don't say, oh, I'm going to press the mute button here. We see all of it. We perceive all of it. We hear all of it. And the problem we have is that we're too, or unusually faithful, to everything. And this can get to the point where we reject everything. That is what we do when we withdraw inside ourselves, is we think this is too much. This whole hole is too much, so I'm going to withdraw into a smaller hole and just pretend that doesn't exist. Another way to say that is that we can't bracket on a small scale. We're not comfortable bracketing, so what we do is we bracket bracketing. We stick our head in the sand and we pretend that, oh, separateness and, and that mute button and, and putting things into boxes, that doesn't exist. I'm going to go inside my head where everything is as it is. And that's really a problem because then you aren't connecting, you aren't loving, you aren't seeing other people. And, but the problem is, is that when you come out of that, it can get really overstimulating because there's all that, there's that bigger hole. And what do you do then? What I found useful is to see things in terms of their relationships and not the things that are related. Let me explain that a bit more. Instead of seeing like people in a room, I will see the dynamics that are being played out. And that helps me a lot because those boxes are a lot bigger, you know? It's a lot more comfortable for me to bracket things in that way, because I'm not ignoring as much. I'm not bracketing as much. And then when I do that, I'm able to see things more as they are, as I want to see them, because then I'm not ignoring anything, or not as much anyway. If I look at things in terms of their relationships, in terms of the dynamics, and like see, oh, there's that conversation, and oh, there's that there's that cluster, that gestalt over in that room. You know, and it takes training. It takes training to see this. But if you do that, then you can kind of develop a gestalt of gestalts. To where instead of just like focusing and obsessing on one thing, because that's another way we can withdraw from the whole is obsession. Instead of doing that, we develop a kind of matrix in which we can see and hear everything in the context of that matrix. And it's not something you can point at, this matrix. It's like a medium, like air or like space, that instead of looking at the things in that air or that space, you look at that air itself. It's like looking at the background. It's like looking at the screen when you're at a movie theater instead of looking at the movie. That actually isn't unpleasant because then you see the movie with new eyes. Or it's like listening to silence when you're in the middle of a crowded subway station. It's really wonderful because when you get to that point, when you look at the medium 
behind everything that is in that medium, then everything can be itself. You don't have to bracket anything because everything's already included. I hope that makes some sense. Uh, like I said, I'm not anyone else. I don't know if this applies to all autism, but I've talked to a lot of autistic people for whom this is their experience. You know, they, they see holes. They don't want to divide anything. They want to keep everything intact. And that causes us problems. But it can also lead to a lot of blessings because we see things that a lot of other people pass over. So no matter who you are, whether you're autistic or neurotypical or whatever, I want to encourage you to see that there are other ways of seeing than the way you see. And remember that because it'll save you a lot of grief in the long run. And remember that all ways of seeing are valid. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, have a good day.